The thing with duplicates or duplicates, how do you say that? Well, it doesn't matter. Okay, now I was experimenting a little bit with these motion graphic effect that I think it was that I saw something similar on, uh, I think it might have been on the spline tool. There's a tool called spline, spline design and for interactive design and stuff like that. And I saw this and I wanted to sort of create something similar in DaVinci Resolve. But the problem here with duplicates, the first pro problem that I ran into was this one. It doesn't show up like this by default, but that's what shows up like after I have implemented that one of the first fixes. I actually asked on Reddit, on DaVinci Resolve's Reddit, uh, for a couple of ideas, if anybody had any ideas of how to go around this, right? Because I wanted the whole thing to show up like this by default, and then the animation be delayed. But the problem with duplicate is that when you duplicate something, this happens by default. If it starts at zero, you can see this is the composition that we have right here, or the shape that we have that we start from. And then I have a ton of duplicates here. Let me show you. This is the main thing. I just made it smaller so it fits on the screen a little bit better. Then we have this one that doesn't show up anything right now because we need to go a little bit forward because we have the five, five frames delay. Right, so the starting point, I guess, will be uh, around the 20 frames mark. The same thing happens on this one, so that we have the, the, the upwards or the top side, and then we merge them, then we have both of them. So that's how I went about building these and just duplicating, duplicating these a bunch of times until I was able to fill the whole screen. And then I use this merge node to make these a little bit bigger again. Since we are using shapes, uh, our polygons it doesn't affect that much the shape but i think if i were to use an s polygon shape this would be a lot sharper and we wouldn't have this weird blurriness on the lines right here but this is this was just an experiment so uh what the problem was that well i wanted the animation to start from zero i want to start working from zero but if you press play right now since we have the delay this is what happens the whole thing starts to build up now the first recommendation by 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 somebody was that Try going into the keyframes section right here. And then when you select something, you should be able to adjust the duration right here by simply dragging one of the edges. Now for zero, it showed this arrow right here, but that didn't actually uh, do anything. But for, the, for some of them, like the polygon right here or the background actually did have this global in and out that right now is set up to negative 51. So at first I thought, well, yeah, it works. And then this started to happen. Uh, all of them started to freak out. There's no size animation for this. It's just a weird bug that shows up right here. Now, if you know why this is happening, let me know. Uh, so yeah, so the, the, sh the them showing up <laughs> was affected by these. But if we set all of these backgrounds to zero again, they would uh, become normal again and they will just not show up anymore. <laughs> but yeah, that was a weird thing that happens because of these backgrounds being in the negative space. So that was the first test. And at first it worked, but then I started to play around with the transform animation right here. And then it stopped working and started to happen. That weird thing started to happen, that build up effect. So what was the alternative for these? Well, another person suggested that well, try going to the spline tool and then set up the the elements or or your elements to have a right click and gradient extrapolation. Now, when you do that and you have this polygon, for example, nothing happens because the gradient extrapolation only worked if you had a keyframe before that was working, for example, the size keyframe. We're gonna add a keyframe right here for the size, make these like that. If I right select this keyframe and then right click and create an extrapolation, that lower arrow, so it basically starts from zero or from the negative space, was working. So the animation keeps going. Otherwise, if we delete that, let me just control Z these, it starts as if it was nothing. So that was another theory of something that maybe could work. And that didn't work. So the last final thing that ended up sort of being the workaround for these is, sorry about that. So the last thing that ends up being a little bit of a workaround for these is to actually 
not start your fusion composition at zero. So what, what I would do was you basically copy your, your composition, just go one second forward, maybe uh, like I press shift and then right arrow and just close one second or two maybe. And then if you cut these, now the starting point of your timeline, it's not gonna be zero right here. This is just an example. So it's gonna show up with the animation. Let, uh, let me actually show you with that one that doesn't have an animation so that we can actually know how it's working. And this one is the animation experiment, but this one is a little bit more complicated than these even. <laughs> so it's not going to work. Okay. Uh, why do we have this animation right here? Oh yeah. Let me just get rid of these right here. This is the starting point, right? So I'm going to copy these and at zero, you will see the buildup is happening. So we're just going to maybe go a second or two. If we go to one second, it starts already. So what you can do is just make this shorter or delete the first second or second sec or the second second. And then you can just open this infusion. And now at the first keyframe, well, I don't know what's doing that right now again. <laughs> don't tell me it's doing this again. The buildup is supposed to happen from right so i'm gonna actually go and set up the background right here in and out again to zero and now at the 24 frame mark it starts but now all of these back these backgrounds has uh well which one this one has an animation that started earlier so i'm just gonna slide all of these a little bit later at 45 right here and the animation starts right here at 45, starts at the center, and then it goes around. Now, I wanted to start at the center and then expand accordingly, like in an ellipse way. And I think the best way for these would be to actually use some sort of particle system. But yeah, I was not, I haven't experimented with particles as much. And to be honest, there's probably other softwares like Unreal that could allow you to do these a lot more easily and it looks better, probably. So. I don't know why I keep fighting with these just so that I can show you this stuff. But anyways, that's just what happens. So yeah, that is the thing. When you start like that, then you can start at zero if you want. And then maybe uh, as if so, like it starts with the whole scene built up and then you can start animating like here, let's say size like this. And then there's a delay. Now, right now we can see the delay happens in a way that is not completely expandable in a, in a circular way. You can see that it goes by line. But in this one, I actually played a little bit with, more with, with the other uh, duplicates that did not have a delay right here. And I set the time offset to two. So now we have a little bit of a more interesting change that happens. I'm going to actually delete the color again. And this one. Now, it's not exactly perfect uh, in the sense that I wanted to start at the center and go outwards, but it sort of works and it looks rather interesting. So it was a starting point for to create some interesting stuff. There's not much control of which one is go, which one goes, which one, <laughs> like where, right? Uh, in the sense of the delay does whatever it sort of wants because of the, du the way the du duplicate is set up. You can see it starts here, then this one as well, because of the way that I duplicated things. But that was a workaround and how to sort of had to deal with this issue with the duplicates. I don't know what the ending goal end goal of this experiment was. I was trying to create something interesting. Let me see if I actually find it. Let me see. Actually, it was not in this line app, I think. Yeah, so I think it was right actually right here in it was this is another tool that is to create that type of things. Uh, let me go to community. I think it was right here. Yeah, here it is. Here we can see it. it was this thing. And if you hover over these, it just sort of jumps and it goes around like this. So that's what sort of inspired that little project and I was trying to see what I could do with that. But yeah, that's, that was the inspiration piece for these. 
um, experiment that I did. I, I don't know what the end goal for it was, but yeah, I'm not sure about duplicates working completely the way I wanted in Fusion yet. But yeah, there. if you want to get inspiration and then try to do it in Fusion, which is probably the harder part, you, you were probably going to be, it's going to be a little bit easier to do it here probably um, because of the way these tools are designed. But you can go into Rive or even Spline and then look up for inspiration pieces and see if you want to try to build something similar in Fusion. So yeah, that is it for this video. I hope it's sort of like a little bit of a chat, right? Telling you what the experience with these duplicates fight with these duplicate <laughs> nodes was and trying to figure out how to make it work, which it sort of did at the end, but it didn't completely work the way I wanted it either. But maybe I just have to experiment a little bit more and try to dominate like uh maybe play around with a duplicate path and see if i can build it that way that's the next thing that i'm probably gonna try when i have some time so yeah that is it for this video i hope it was a little bit helpful in a way it's not specifically a tutorial but oh and don't forget that if you want over a thousand tools and elements for davinci resolve make sure to check out bundle.swavi.com and then find out more about all the tools that I have available and that I've built for the venture solve in one single bundle. That is it for this video. Once again, see you in the next one here in Swati. Bye.